It is with great pleasure that I am joining you today. My name is Jade Harrell, and I'll be conducting our interview today for the St. Louis County Library and HEC Media. It is our opportunity to share extraordinary stories, and in this case, I'm sharing a book of extraordinary stories about extraordinary Black Missourians, and I am joined today by the authors of this book, A Family Affair. Dr. John Wright Sr. and Dr. John Wright Jr., who will be joining us for this conversation. <laughs> and thank you for being with us, the both of you. And uh, for all of you who are watching, before we even get into our conversation, be sure to pick up your copy of Extraordinary Black Missourians at our partner, our bookstore partner, Novel Neighbor. Dr. Wright, thank you for being here today. My pleasure. Well, how did you come across such a treasure trove of information about extraordinary Black Missourians that you are able to share with us in this book? Are these your friends? What inspired you here? Well, I wish I had that many friends. And some of, the only problem with some of them, they were deceased. And I couldn't share that with them. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, over the years, you collect stories and you put them together. And then you run into people and they say, "Have you? what about this person? What about this person? So over time, you get a collection, and then you put it together. What sent you on your journey to the first one? Well, well I, got, so I guess it goes back beyond the first one. I'm in education. And material kept coming into the school district without us in it. And so you get kids who have a warped sense of the world and the world around them. And then you have some that's incomplete and inaccurate. And, and here's an example when I say inaccurate stories. The Jim Beckworth story. Jim Beckworth was an African-American who discovered, discovered the path to the Sierra Nevada mountains. When the movie came out, he was a white guy. And many of the uh, pictures of him try to portray him as white. So as a result of that, Kids, both black and white, don't have a clue that Jim Beckworth was an African-American. So you try to straighten out myths, stories, and facts for kids growing up. So did this start with your discovery of mistruths or a pursuit of looking for someone you might have been inspired by and then you continued that with other children knowing that it's difficult to make those associations when you have no connection well it started out collecting books over the years there was a book that came out extraordinary african-americans in the united states and i said well you know we've got a lot of these folks in st louis so i went to the publisher and said why don't we do extraordinary african-americans in st louis well, John, you need to do the state. So that's how we got to the state. But it started out with a desire to do African-Americans in St. Louis only. And so that's how we got started with that. So you got uh, love for St. Louis. And St. Louis is notorious for extraordinary individuals and folks that have, have really launched from here and made major impact in the world. Why St. Louis as the epicenter for this collection? Because I was born in St. Louis. You know, you always do your hometown, you know, the things you're familiar with most. Since I've been here and I've learned more about St. Louis than I have Kansas City, so it seemed natural that I try to pick my hometown where I have information and collect information over the years. Absolutely. What did filling in the color and the detail and the accomplishments of the, oh my gosh, Names I knew and some I would have never guessed were St. Louisans. But as you came to that, like what did you feel afterward? A sense of pride, a sense of better understanding, uh, a sense of loss? What, where were you once you started to fill in the color? Well, no matter where do you go from here? There are so many stories to tell, so much that's missing. There's enough left untold that you need to go deeper into the story and build more around the story. Hopefully, others will go in and build a full story about these individuals. They'll be curious. They'll go on the internet and try to find more. I like this story. Let me find out more about this individual. And they will begin to do their own research. 
the page and a half and two pages is a taste. So you need to do more. If you're really interested, you do more. And hopefully that will inspire others to do research. Well, it's not an unfamiliar practice to give someone an, an appetizer or a sample in order to ignite their thirst or hunger or even interest. And so now that we have this amazing resource, um, and you say, where do we go from here? I'm wondering if the page and a half doesn't tell the full story, does the collection and the connections of their stories tell another, tell another fill in the blanks for our narrative as a community or people? I think it tells us what's missing. Uh, it tells a lot about our miseducation. It tells us we need to do more as a community, as a people, as a teacher, as a librarian, to get more information to our people about a well-rounded education. Because too often we grew up with a warped sense of the world and we need to round it out. Absolutely. And not only with African-Americans, but there's so many others who've been excluded from the mosaic. Absolutely. And it's not a complete story if all the lines are not, are not told. Uh, question then, you have a, a son that bears your name. I do. And your son. I have has, a grandson also. Is he John as well? Is this the He son? is, he is, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm picking up on a trend here. Like these <laughs> legacy, generational <laughs> things are important to you. Can you share, and, and, and I can maybe touch a little bit on that, but for me, a book like yours restores the severed connection that I may have had from who and what I am. For your son and grandson and the other Johns thereafter, if you're anything like George Foreman, <laughs> may, <laughs> what did you want to carry forward to pass along to them by doing this work? And did doing it together make a difference? I think uh, the biggest thing is sharing a story, but getting them interested in history. We're working now on our genealogical records. And so my grandson, he was pleased when he did. We, he had a picture of his, I guess you'd say, my middle name, who I'm named after. When you go to class and people begin to talk about your history, when you can begin to talk about your grandfather, your great-grandfather, your great-great, and have pictures of those individuals, and how you got your middle name and the individual who you're named after with the middle. And so those stories go on and on and on. And one group of, one branch of my mother's family, we can trace all the way back to Africa. Wow. Now that in and of itself, so from Missouri to Africa, the significance of that is it's hard to explain to people who may not have lived the same experience. You sound like you found gold or a precious rare gem. When you say, hey, we found our way all the way back to Africa. Tell me about the importance of that and what it means for you today. I think it, uh, we didn't just arrive here. It was a long journey. What did it take to get here? You begin to know from Northern Ghana where this branch came from, all the way to the cave castles at the coast of the ocean where Ghana, um, Accra, where the cave castles are, slave castles are, and going to Louisiana and going on the Mississippi and other way. So you begin to trace that. You begin to trace the conditions they lived under. Found one of the branch was a registered voter after Reconstruction. Uh, names in the book. And so those things, you begin to build a story in a web that spreads out. And it, it's good. It's good. It feels like a safety net of sorts to me when you say build a web, because I feel like I could fall back into it and have foundation again. What makes somebody extraordinary enough to get in the book? But tell me what's something that surprised you? Well, I tell you, 
I sat in the living room with a number of these people. So when you begin to talk about, like Margaret Bush Wilson, I sat in the living room with her. And she gave me the names of other people. And Frankie Freeman, I sat in her living room and received information. Herman Dreer was my advisor in college. And so he was with the fraternity, he did the fraternity. So I have a number of people who have left an indelible mark on me that it's there. And so it's having the connection of those I actually knew. Those are the ones you treasure, not only the ones you read about, but the ones you treasure. Others, you dream about them, like Jim Beckworth, you know, he was Indians uh, going through the mountains and became an Indian chief and York who went with Lewis and Clark, saved Clark's life a number of times. Because of him, he made uh, peace with the Native Americans so they were able to finish the expedition. So those are things you really think about and individuals who leave a mark with you. And I tell kids, and we both of us, if these people could do it, in spite of the odds, you can do it too. You can do it. Absolutely. And by providing this account and the, the pointing us to the various stars that come from our sky and ancestry right here in our homeland, then you most certainly are pointing them the way to achieving whatever they may possibly dream and help them even dream more grand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would love to hear from uh, Mr. Junior Wright, Dr. Junior Wright. Here he is in the flesh. And then please also send our regards, hello and greetings to the missus because you gentlemen did not get through these stories by yourself. That's right. <laughs> we didn't get here on our own. Before you go, uh, Dr. Wright, could you tell me a little bit more about Miss Sylvia's contribution? And should I be also addressing Miss Sylvia as Dr. Sylvia Wright? <laughs> no, I tried to get her, but she, did, she decided she didn't want to do all that work. So That's she got another right. master. So she has two masters. She's she got has, two. She's got two Johns. That was probably a lot to do. <laughs> but she had an opportunity to get a doctor, yeah, she and she there. saw the papers from my book, my project, and she said, "I don't want to do all that." I think if we had a conversation, she would not be intimidated. <laughs> no, no, you would. You would. She has a mind of her own. Oh yeah. She'd give it all to you. Absolutely. Tell me, about, uh, tell me a little bit more about her contribution because we cannot have this book without Miss Sylvia Wright. Well, what I would do, I'm busy writing all the time. Mm -hmm. And so you make you write, then you make you want to make sure it makes sense and it flows. And she would always back me up, say, look, you need to work on this a little more. It doesn't quite get what you wanted to say. So I want you to tweak it a little more. I expect you to do this. And so that was my backup and my support for all this. And so she was always there to make sure it flowed, it said what we wanted to say. And that was it, yeah. Mission accomplished then. I want to ask you then, the significance of this being a family project mm -hmm. and connecting us to our greater um, ancestral and, and homeland family, how how does writing the book together make a difference as a family? Well, oh, I think you spend time together and you get to know each other more. And I think that's important. Then to the rest of the family, when they see this collaboration, it helps them also. And I think we share this book with them. Mm -hmm. And then when they see all of us working together on it, it has an impression for the rest of the family. Absolutely, and that includes us. And, and indeed, I thank you for that effort and for, for seeing it through. But I am most certainly encouraged by your call to us to do the research, to find the information and fill in the blanks so that, that we can tell accurate stories, but also have an, an accurate impression of who was here, what they'd done and our tie into it as well. So thank you so much, Dr. Wright. And a lot of that could be found in Kaya Library also. Well, it can be, but we're talking about collections. And this book can be found there and with our bookstore partners where you can purchase it and study it with your grands and your great grands. 
from uh, Novel Neighbor. Okay. Okay, will you bring the younger Mr. Wright? Here we go. Here we go. Handsome out the family, but we'll see. Okay. <laughs> All right now. All right. You got your mama's good looks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see you smile. Thank you for joining us. As we're looking at this masterpiece, Dr. Wright, would you agree that it is indeed a masterpiece, but we're looking at second edition. What's different from the first to the second and why? What would you change or improve if you could? Well, there are a few things that are different. There are people who have died <laughs> that were in the first edition and we, we made mention that they, they passed on. We've added some people, uh, and we've changed uh, some. We've added some photographs, or changed some some things out. Uh, this was at the request of the publisher. Uh, they had asked for the second edition, and so that those are the the significant changes. Mm -hmm. Now, this could have been you all are educators. You, your dad, your mom has got master's degrees. Who knows how much talent is running right there from your family? Uh, why uh, a book? You could be doing this in a classroom. You could be lecturing. What in particular led you to this way of sharing this very- In a classroom, you are addressing the number of people who are in the class, but a book, you're addressing the world. So uh, you have the opportunity to reach far more people uh, when you write a book and publish than you would if you just were limited to the people in the space of a room. Sure, well then I need to go back to the mission that I heard from your father, but would like to hear from you. You want to reach more people. What do you want them to know here do and say. We want them to know that there are significant contributions that were made by Black people. That most of these people were ordinary people who through sheer will and determination became extraordinary uh, by taking advantage of their gifts and going forward to, to create something out of nothing. They were determined to uh, build a life for themselves and for their families and for others. You come from a family that teaches, inspires, leads. Um, for you, do you feel that you had access to this information as a young person and as you were forming your ideas about the world? <laughs> oh yes, Tell me we, what definitely, like up we, we, <laughs> we definitely had access to the information. Now, you know, the, 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 I think some of the trick was is to uh, have it, you know, being able to take advantage of it. Uh, uh, you don't really realize, I think, when, when you're very young, uh, 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 just how important and just how significant this is. But with age comes wisdom. Uh, and so uh, the, the things that I, I kind of took for granted, I really, really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I feel like the folks in the book are also sending a message. There's a wisdom that's coming from the yeses that they said in their lives. For you all to make the book, what does it take to make the cut? Because you could have probably filled up several volumes. Uh, how did you come to qualify those that made the pages? I think there's some stories that stick out as being unique and formative. There's certain people that are in there that you may not know a whole lot about, but but they, you know, they made a, a, a significant contribution, like when my father was talking about Jim Beckwith. Uh, and there are others like uh, let's say Francis McIntosh, who uh, uh, people would not know very much about him, but it really shaped the way St. Louis was looked at and how it was seen, his murder. Uh, 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 you know, you talk about uh, a, a queen and slim, uh, you know, which is a fictional kind of portrayal of two people who are out on a date. 
uh, and, and they wind up killing a police officer and on the run and being hunted. Well, Francis McIntosh is a real person who is going on a real date. And all of a sudden he is picked up by police uh, for minding his own business. He's walking down the street, he's minding his own business. Two police officers ask him to get involved in an arrest and he refuses. He doesn't know that they're police officers. He, all he knows is, is, is that he's a person of color and, it's, these, and they're, they're white men that are, it's their business. Because back then, you know, the, the officers didn't wear uniforms. They only had badges and, you know, whether he saw that or not, he chose not to get involved. And then they grab him and say, we're going to put you in jail for five years for obstructing justice. Now, this is a man who, who's just walking down. He's minding his own business. All he wants to do is just go on a date. And he finds that he's going to be given five years in prison for minding his own business. And he panics. He stabs one officer, kills another. He's caught taken to jail, a mob takes him from the jail, takes him on Chestnut Street and literally burns him alive. Oh, and the, the details of, uh, of the lynching in and of itself are, are, are horrific. Uh, but uh, uh, this is a course of a day. A and St. Louis was tarnished badly by this. And by this behavior, and they they tried very hard to say that you know this is not us, when clearly this was very much us. <laughs> this was very much who the, the the people of the city, and and so they worked a little harder on uh, on reforming, on justice and reform. Mm -hmm. And so extraordinary isn't always the love stories. No, it is not. The achievements. It uh, is I'm not. Glad I was going to ask you to pull out one that wasn't expected. This is an extraordinary story for many reasons. Some may say, well, and I was just thinking back to another interview. He was a traitor. He was a criminal. And I'm like, so were some of our administrators. But that's <laughs> 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 but, but as I'm thinking about this, and, and when I asked you the question about wisdom and what this man had nothing but living going on and then not only life taken away for five years, but then beyond that. So not that walking down the street was extraordinary, but his life stood for something extraordinary. Yes, it did. What do you hope we can extract from this book along those lines of this is something you need to understand. You represent something extraordinary. What is that you want us to draw from, from the collection? That we are really standing on the shoulder of giants. That we may not get everything that we pay for, but we will pay for everything that we get. That there are opportunities uh, if we choose to explore them. We really have a number of people who, in spite of everything, had found a way to make a way of, out of no way. Uh, and we have fewer obstacles now than they did then. And so we have, well, what is our excuse? What do we have to uh, 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 to say is the reason why we can't do something? Uh, uh, it would have been very hard for me and my brothers not to have gone to college after what my parents <laughs> had put out there for us. <laughs> so there's no excuse because the path is delayed. So when you say there's no reason. And then when I think about what you all have done with this book, I see the reason is because that missing information is the difference between I can or I can try or I can't, you know, the difference between can't and can try by knowing I don't have to have an excuse. There's less people have done more with less. And yes. all I need to do is follow their lead and example. And it's in me. 
<laughs> and it's in me, not only for uh, Missourians, Black Missourians, people of color, but for everyone. These stories are vital to weaving the fabric of our, our stories and our lives together. Um, what if you could get a message to someone in here that is no longer with us that you wanted that you wrote about to share and had an opportunity to have them here on this call what might you say well i was trying to think of who uh who that might be mm -hmm. it, if there was a, a a figure uh callie house uh who is in there who was working for reparations for slaves, and, and, and which is something that still goes on to this day. It's an unfinished work, but you know, more than a hundred years ago, she was standing up and saying that you know there should be some sort uh, uh, of payment uh, uh, of, to the slaves for the work that they did to help build the country. Uh, I thought she'd be interesting, uh, Celia. What would you say to her if you had the chance to speak to her now? She was born in 1861. Well, I would say that that, you know, that the fight continues and thank you for initiating the fight. Wow. Uh, thank you. If I were to have you send an invitation to our viewers to get this book, what might you say and welcome them into this beautiful journey of stories and people and extraordinary circumstances <laughs> in addition. <laughs> like, I don't know how I probably wouldn't be here facing some of the challenges that folks have overcome in this book. So um, what what's your call out, your invitation? Well, to I think when you say that you wouldn't be here, everybody rises to the occasion. I think that uh, if they had their choice, they wouldn't have gone through it, you know, uh, but, but it is what it is. So uh, they, they dealt with it as you will deal with it and as you, you know, would have done dealt with it. Uh, I, I think that, uh, that the strength of our ancestors is, is very much with us today. <laughs> Well, if that's the case, we can endure anything. <laughs> and, I, and, and, and we can create the structures and foundation where we don't have to, huh? <laughs> I just want to thank you, your father, your mom, and your family for pitching in on this effort, because not only did it maybe strengthen you and your family, it did with us, and most certainly appreciate it. Uh, and I would love to have a signed copy okay. while I got you on camera. <laughs> holding you to that charge but I will be passing out every other copy I can find because it is a very valuable viable resource not just education but but inspiration thank you so very much you are so very welcome and thank you for having us it's our pleasure